So I want to do the video series that I've seen that says, why do I garden? So that's what I'm doing here. It's actually in front of my flower bed by my house, because um, I haven't really shown that yet. And I just wanted to talk about why I garden. Um, so there's a series of five questions that I'm gonna answer. And the first one is, of course, why do I garden? And I think my answer is different this year than it's ever been. And I've, I'm, a, I'm a gardener from a long time, and we'll talk about that next, because that's the next question, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. But my reasons for garden have changed. Um, uh, last year, I had had a uh, surgery, so I wasn't outside. And the year before that, I was working on an editing project. I'm a writer, I'm a novelist, I have an agent, but I don't have a publishing contract. And I was working on a project where I, um, spent quite a bit of time inside crunching out the details of what I was doing and I forsook my took forsook my time outside I wasn't really focused on it I didn't make it the priority because those that priority wasn't um, what I needed to be doing I where I had been what I'd spent my money on and what I needed to be responsible for but I kind of missed it in an unhealthy way like uh, I think for me as a creative my garden is a place of uh, where I can see the change happen I can see it you know I can see the progress I can put a seed in the ground and see it flourish and it's a practice of patience and, and yet the patience is pretty much a promise too because more times than not when you put that seed in the ground it eventually turns into something and grows where sometimes like in the writing journey that I'm on I can't I don't feel like there's a guarantee that this thing that I'm doing that I'm spending so much time on will actually grow see a little update there of my watermelons yay and my cantaloupe I'm so excited about that I've never really been very successful at growing them and I got some flowers that I planted from my own greenhouse which we're gonna show the greenhouse and uh, sister-in-law sister-in-law friend um, gave me a, um, a Daphne bush and over there in the far away one over there where the over there where the hydrangeas are in the little birdhouse she gave a mock orange I planted a mock orange over there so that was fun so for me, the garden is a place of the wonder, like the wonder of watching a seed, holding a seed in your hand and seeing all the different flavor, sizes and shapes of a seed turn into something, um, the faith and the hope in that. And then also, like I'm like a little kid on Christmas morning when the seeds burst through the dirt and then just this tiny little thing, I, I feel a little bit inside myself of going, hey. So it's just like practicing contentment and, um, enjoying the beauty and the shapes and the sizes like it's kind of amazing to me how many different kinds of plants there are how many different types of flowers there are they're all so very different and i live in a place that has now i know i'm zone 8b and there's 222 days of growing in a year and that's quite a bit and it's worth it's worth noticing especially when i also live in oregon and i mean a couple years ago we went 65 days without seeing the sun you know that was kind of a record and it's not fun to go through that so somehow when you see the flowers bloom and you see the seeds take off and you have something growing from one year to the next, it's kind of like, it's like a different kind of sunshine. It just kind of changes the way you look on the inside. So um, I was watching, I watch a lot of Jess with Roots and Refuge and she talked about the word potager where the places that you are creating in your garden, whether they're veggies or fruit, are also a place of art. And um, a, a sanctuary of sorts where you can go there and you can be still and recognize. Um, I live in Oregon and I get to go to the coast quite a bit and there's this profound things that happens when you stand by the ocean and it's just this understanding of the magnitude of what's happening around you and the power and and it gives you a healthy feeling, a healthy good feeling of not of, of how small you are like in the bigger scheme of things. Oh, and that's the hub over there. See, he's got binoculars. He's looking over the edge. I should show you over there. He has his own little thing. So that's the creek back there. And we get to look across back there all the time. And he spots for deer and coyotes and whatever other creatures are out there. We have a beaver that swims up and down the creek and big blue herons and things like that. And he has a little bench that we put in over there. I don't know if you can see it. See his little bench? I don't know, can't see. Like right there is a little bench and one of those little outside fire things. And it's just a place where we savor and retreat. And um, remember what we're doing in this life, <laughs> you know, the sanity of the, that's not the work grind. That's not the um, produce, produce, produce. It's kind of the be still and know. Be still and know what you're doing and, you know, finding the joy in, in the contentment in it. Um, 
So I want to show you my greenhouse because, and then I'll answer my next question. It says, how long have you gardened? Um, I've gardened since I was little. I remember gardening before when I was in high school and junior high with my mom. And I am going to put in right here a garden video of my mom's patio deck because once you see it, you're going to understand why I would love gardening because she's also, in my opinion, both a gardener and an artist. She's a potager. <laughs> it's so fun. So uh, obviously, uh, my new experience is planting and doing all the seeds and planting new things and new things to me. Um, the Back to Eden has really, really hit a sweet spot for me because I like a really full garden bed with lots of flowers in it, almost like a cottage garden or a, you know, an English cottage garden. But I don't like it when you can't see distinctly where one plant is and where it's not and where the weeds are and where the weeds aren't. And so again, the mulch system to the rescue, even the floor of this is uh, bark chips because, and, and it's working pretty great. I just love it. So I have been propagating a lot. Uh, I think that collecting seeds and creating my own plants off of starts has been just an absolute uh, delight. I didn't even realize how much fun I had. I'm probably more into that than I am canning and preserving. I kind of like the fresh eat it right now. Like I'm holding this egg. My chickens laid eggs this week and it's so tiny. I mean, I wish you could feel it's like it's like a two thirds of the size of a regular chicken egg because they're just the first, you know, <laughs> you know, the fresh farm eggs. But even just stuff like this, like this is the kiwis that I ate at Costco and from our store. And I've shown them to you guys a couple times, but the fact that they're happy and they're growing, it's just kind of thrilling. And of course, these, these are my new love is the little sedums that are like, they look like little peas. I don't even know the name of it, the fancy name, but I have one in the house. And so these are starts to get some more going on. So I'm propagating it and it's just so fun. Um, all kinds of things like that and um, enjoying uh, my dream and delight for the front of the greenhouse was to make it so that it would be beautiful and that it would have like like flowers across the whole front you know while the inside was doing its thing and it's slowly getting there i have things that are cosmos that are coming on and different different kinds of zinnias and and so it's awesome so what do i grow um i just did a garden tour so you can see all my thing but what I really have to say is that I can't believe how many new things that I'm doing. Um, there's so many new things happening in my, my journey. I used to always do like uh, cucumbers and um, uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, crookneck squash, zucchini, and um, sometimes green beans, sometimes not. Uh, never really any of the lettuces because they would bolt on me. Um, just a really sparse amount of things because the weeds by this time of year my tomatoes would be about hip high and the grass would be right in there mixed with them and literally it was like a jungle and I would kind of try to get my husband to keep up with it while I ate the fruit like I'd hunt through and get the tomatoes out and then I try to kind of talk him into um part you know doing the rest so the goal is uh like I'm putting myself I have a vision that's two or three or four years deep where this stuff, like these flower beds, they're kind of empty-ish. They got hollyhocks and a few things here. I just want flat, I just want it to be full. And the maintenance to be low, like you plant and you um, put things in and then they, they mature, they reseed themselves over the year. And then they're just beautiful, you know, kind of a beauty on top of the beauty that we already have, because it's just pretty fun. Um, got the raspberries over there, raspberries and blueberries. I do want the food forest to have a lot of uh, veggie or uh, fruit and veggies in it. Um, so, you know, like right now at my house, if you, um, if you, if I go up to my local fruit stand and produce stand and I buy tomato or uh, strawberries and blueberries and raspberries that would feed a family of seven with great big, huge strapping boys, I spend a lot of money and get just a tiny little bit and it's done in a hit and then, and then we're on to the next because they're too expensive. So I want to grow a lot of blueberries and raspberries and strawberries and nectarines and peaches and you know the things that we would just want to sit and eat and consume green beans from the garden you know all that kind of fun so I'm not really I'm kind of a cross between a homesteader and a you know I'm not really full homesteader I do have a, a rabbit tractor at the moment with my bunnies in it so I guess that makes me a little bit more redneck and and I grew my own egg so <laughs> uh, so how long have you been gardening since I was a junior hire probably I'm gonna show my mom's video what do I grow showed you that what is my favorite thing to grow? Um, in the flower department, I probably love zinnias. Zinnias are pretty fun for me um, just because they're such a hardy flower in a vase. 
Um, and then in the garden, I think I want to say the lemon cucumbers because my family loves them so much and they're just such a fun eat straight out of the garden and it's kind of like a fresh tomato feel. Um, I participated in this thing at the beginning of the year, uh, entrepreneur thing that was from a bunch of writers were doing it. That's eight things to, 18 things to do in 2018 and they couldn't be anything work related or production related so they were really about contentment and being still and being patient which uh, this has been a year for me to learn where my patience is, comes from and that I have done apart from the Lord, <laughs> honest confession. And in the midst of that, my 18 things, one of my things on my 18 list was to eat a garden fresh tomato that I grew myself. And so that's kind of where some of this journey started. Um, and then the last question is why do I YouTube? Well, I YouTube because as a writer, I'm supposed to have a presence on social media and I've been doing that, my writing thing. Uh, I found some papers that I had worked on since 2004, but I haven't, I got really serious in 2012 and I got acquired my agent in 2013. And it's tricky to have a social media presence when you don't actually have a book yet. That's, that's, a, I feed my birds on top of that. So I can, this is all what I see out my bedroom window is, um, these, like my bird feeders over here, all this fun squirrels come down and that's where I, I've had some videos back here before and I planted the mock orange tree in the middle of that and I have a plant I'm actually gonna go back to my greenhouse because I have a plant that I took starts off of that I can't find anywhere on the internet no matter how many descriptive ways I try to describe it so if somebody knows what it is I will um, get your help so the YouTube for me is something I'm supposed to be doing um, Insta you know all that kind of stuff for a writer but it's a lot more fun to talk about gardening than writing. So I do have a lot of author interviews on here. I have a lot of other things like that because I'm an, uh, I've found that there's strength in numbers. So when you um, learn things from an, an author who's been there before you and who understands how the process works, it's a lot easier. And um, the garden thing I think is just helping me uh, pace myself. I think for my, my journey is gonna be years in the making and that I have to find the joy in the now or I'll burn out. So if you're in a season where you want to be encouraged and move forward, then move forward with me. Come hang out, we'll do this. Okay, so here's my mystery plant. I'm gonna get your help identifying. I gotta put the egg down because weirdly I'm still carrying it around. So we'll set it right here and try not to forget about it. And, uh, okay, so these are starts. So they obviously are not all, they're a little weepy. But see how the leaves are variegated? And then the, the berries are kind of pink, but they actually have little green ones too. And when the plant is really mature, they actually turn dark, like a dark purple. And I've looked up all kinds of stuff trying to figure out what it was, and I can't. So if you have an answer to my mystery plant, that would be wonderful. I would really appreciate knowing what that is. And um, I think that's the end of this video. Um, I'm going to do an update. I'm going to do a... Oh, my dog was trying to eat my pumpkin. He can't eat my pumpkin. I'm gonna give you an update on my um, hedge that I'm doing up at the front gate. And so you guys can help me as we grow this privacy hedge. That'll be fun.